Notion, being one of the most versatile productivity tools out there, has quickly become a favorite for millions. And with Notion API, we can take our Notion workflow to the next level by automating repetitive tasks and integrating it with third-party tools. OpenAI, on the other hand, has revolutionized how we interact with technology, making artificial intelligence more accessible than ever. By combining Notion's flexibility with OpenAI's AI capabilities, we can create powerful AI agents that helps streamline our workflow and save countless hours. In this tutorial, I'll guide you step-by-step -step in creating your own Notion AI agent in Python to serve as your personal assistant for managing Notion tasks. For the prerequisites, you'll need a Notion account, an OpenAI API key, and some experience writing Python code. Now, before starting the tutorial, let me give you a quick demo for some of the things you can do with the Notion agent so you have a clear idea of what we're building. The most basic thing you can do with the Notion agent is to add a text block. For example, in the prompt, I can say, add hello world to my Notion. The agent will examine the request, figure out the function to use, and make the API call to add the text block. Other thing you can do, like add a to-do list. For example, in the prompt, I will say, create a to-do list for the following items, followed by the list items. And the Notion agent will look at the list and the request, search for the appropriate function to add the items into a to-do list in a Notion page. And the Notion agent is not limiting to one task at a time. I can instruct the agent with multiple tasks. For example, I can tell the Notion agent to add both URL and image to my Notion page, and it will perform both tasks altogether in a single request. Looks like the image URL is blocked from Wikipedia, but you get the idea. And keep in mind that because we are developing the agent from the ground up, we have the freedom to integrate with other third-party services to make the Notion agent even more capable. That's all for the demo. Let's dive right into the tutorial to learn how to build your own Notion AI agent in Python. The first thing we're going to do is to set up our Python environment. This step is optional. Before I start any Python tutorial, I always make sure to set up a virtual environment to keep my project dependencies isolated and avoid any potential package conflicts with other Python projects. In a directory, launch a terminal and run the command python-m vmv followed by the Python virtual environment name. Once the Python virtual environment is created, cd into the project directory and activate the environment. To build the Notion agent, we will be using OpenAI's Swarm framework. Run the command showing on the screen to install all the required Python packages. And to store API keys and constant variables, create an EMV file. That's it for now to set up our Python environment. Let's move on to set up a Notion integration profile. To use Notion's API, we first need to create a Notion integration profile. Navigate to notion.so slash profile slash integrations. A Notion integration profile represents an API token associated with an integration you create in Notion's developer platform. It allows external applications or scripts to interact with Notion databases and pages. You can create multiple integration profiles to separate assets from third-party tools. Now create a new integration profile. Give the profile a name. Make sure you don't include Notion in the profile name as it is not allowed. Select the workspace. There are two types of integrations. Internal integrations are private, single workspace tools tailored to specific workflows, using integration tokens for secure access. They focus on personalization and privacy. Public integrations, on the other hand, 
can be used by any Notion user in any workspace. They allow members to interact with their workspace using Notion's REST API once the integration has been properly authorized. Choose internal for the integration type, then click Save to create the profile. Copy the integration secret. This will be your Notion API key. Open the EMV file. In the EMV file, create an environment variable called Notion API key and paste the Notion integration secret. Create three more environment variables called OpenAI API key, Notion endpoint, and Notion page ID. In Notion, there's no single global parent page that serves as the root of your workspace. Instead, in your Notion workspace, each top-level page is treated as a parent page. Create a new top-level page, or use an existing page, and copy the page ID to the Notion page ID environment variable. And to give a Notion integration profile access to a Notion page, on the top right corner, click on the three dots icon. Scroll to Connections. Search for the integration profile and add it to the Pages connection. At this point, we are done setting up everything. The next step is dive into the code development. To get started with the agent development, create a Python file and name it prompts.py. We are going to use the prompts module to store the instructions for the Notion agents. We are going to create three Notion agents. Delegate Agent, Page Agent, and Block Agent. For the Delegate Agent instruction, we are going to assign agent delegation tasks based on specific user inputs and define clear rules for handling particular behaviors to ensure tasks are routed to the appropriate sub-agent effectively. For the Page Agent, we are going to instruct the agent to focus on managing pages within a Notion workspace using the tools available and providing any additional information when using the tools. Do the same thing with the block agent. The next step is to create functions for the agents to perform Notion specific tasks. Create a Python script and name it tools.py. Import the Python packages and load the environment variables as showing on the screen. Now, everyone uses Notion differently. The functions I'm about to share are the ones I frequently use in my personal workflow. There are quite a few, so I'll go through each one relatively quickly. You may not need all of them. Just copy the ones that fit into your workflow. If you want to create your own function designed for your project, Definitely check out Notion's API documentation to see all the available options. The first function is the create Notion page function. Like the name states, it's used to create a Notion page. The function takes the page title argument to set the page name. The setup for all the functions are similar. The main difference are the API endpoint, request body to specify the parameters, and the API call type. When agents load functions, the doc string will help them understand their usage. Be sure to include a doc string whenever possible. In the function, we are going to load the API key and the page ID. If you have multiple top-level pages, you can modify the function to accept page ID. Then define the URL endpoint for the API call and request headers. The properties dictionary is how we define the parameters for an API call. Notion API documentation has all the examples. Once we have everything prepared, the last step is to make an API call. To create a Notion page, we will make a post request and supply the required information as a dictionary object in the JSON parameter is showing. The add notion heading block function is used to create notion headings. These are the parameters. 
In the doc string, I am giving an example showing agents how to use the function. Due to the number of nested layers in the request body, I'm creating a text object to set the heading title separately, making it easier to modify. After that, I'll create a data dictionary to construct the request body, use it as an argument, and plug in the text object. In Notion, a heading can also be used as a hyperlink. If its hyperlink is true, update the link with hyperlink URL. Then make a patch request to add a heading block. The add notion paragraph block function adds a text block. Similar to the heading function, you can set the block as a hyperlink. And here is the rest of the code to create the function. From this point, I will only show the function source code and briefly describe each function's usage. The add notion code block function adds code snippet block. The code parameter takes the source code, language is the programming name, and caption to describe the code. Here's the rest of the code. The add notion embed block function embeds an URL. The add notion YouTube URL block embeds a YouTube video using iframe. This is a neat feature if you want to watch multiple YouTube videos or track YouTube videos in a single place. The add notion image block function displays an image giving an image URL. The image URL must ends with a file extension. Just keep that in mind. The add notion bookmark block function embeds an URL to give it a preview of a web page in Notion. The add notion number list block function takes a list object and creates a number of bullet points. Because for some reason, when an agent passes an argument value, it can only pass a string value. In the function, we need to check if the item's argument is a string. If so, split the string into a list. Now, looking at the data dictionary, you'll notice that we're creating a list of dictionaries. This means each number item will be its own block. The add notion bulleted list blocks function is the exact same function as the number list block function, except it add a list of bullet point blocks. The last function is the add notion to do block function. The to do block function add a list of checkbox blocks. That's it for all the functions. Let's move on to create the agents. Create a blank Python file and name it agents.py. In the agents module, import the Python packages and functions and variable showing here. To keep the cost down, define a model variable and assign the GPT for O mini model. If your workflow is working with audio or image data, or you need to perform relatively complex tasks, in that case, I would use GPT for O model instead. Create the delegate page and block agents using the agent class. In each agent creation, give them a name assign a model, specify the instruction on the behavior, 
and add the default function to give them the capability to transfer to an appropriate agent. Next, create the agent transfer functions using the result class to give us the flexibility to add context variables. Context variables are essentially a dictionary of additional variables you want to pass to an agent or to use when invoking the function calls. In this case, we are passing the Notion API key and page ID so the agents know which page to use. In the last step, add the Notion helper functions to the appointed agents to give them the capability to perform tasks. The reason why I add the helper functions separately from the agent transfer functions is because this makes task allocation much easier. Imagine having hundreds of functions and wanting to add them in groups. This approach simplifies that process. All right, we are almost finished. Create a Python file, name it app.py. This will be the main script to launch the Notion agent. In the import statement, import the Python libraries showing on the screen. The run demo loop function is optional. That function is a built-in wrapper function from the Swarm framework to simplify the agent launch. If you use the run demo loop function to launch a session, the message history will be saved in the log for reference. This means that when you send an API request, the message history will be included in the input, leading to higher input token usage. But if you just want an agent to perform simple Notion tasks, without needing to reference previously completed tasks, you can insert a while loop routine. This is what I am showing here to set the messages list to contain only a single message every time when invoking an API call. This will keep the input token usage to a minimum. Basically, if you're using an agent to help with brainstorming or assisting on a project, then use the demo loop function. Otherwise, use the single message while loop routine. Now, let's test the agents to ensure they perform the Notion tasks as instructed. For testing, I'm just going to give a few instructions to ensure the tasks are performed correctly. Let's start with create a page called my testing page. Okay, we can see that the Notion page is successfully created with the page URL returned in the response. For something more challenging, let's ask the agent to perform two tasks altogether. Let's ask the agent to create a H2 heading block called Sora Demo and embed the Sora Demo YouTube video giving the video URL. Because the URL fails the validation check in the function, the Notion agent rejects it with an explanation. The header is included because the Notion agent performs multiple tasks sequentially. The first task is completed, but the second task fails in this case. One way to address this issue is to include a directive in the instructions, asking the agent to delete the blocks if one of the tasks fails. Let's fix the URL and try again. And this time the YouTube video is embedded successfully. Let's do one more test to finish up the tutorial. This time I will ask the Notion agent to create a bullet list. And uh, the bullet points are created. Oh, and I just want to say that this also solves Notion's lack of built-in feature to automatically convert speech to text and save money by building your own Notion AI with extended capabilities. And that concludes this building your Notion agent project tutorial. I hope you enjoyed this video. Don't forget to like the video and subscribe the channel. If you have any feedback or questions, please leave them in the comments below. Happy coding. See you in the next one.